So before we, we start in earnest, um, I just want to explain kind of what we're going to be doing today. Um, so this election, as you guys know, um, is a tremendous source of hope and fear, right? So today we're going to examine uh, the Buddha's teachings on how to create peace in our own hearts and in the outer world. So we're going to be focusing particularly on compassion, uh, self-care, and where we go from here. So we're going to start by um, reciting the opening verses from Shanti Deva that I just sent you in the chat. Okay, so have a look at that. Since I so recite together, okay. Since I and other beings both in wanting happiness are equal and alike, what difference is there to distinguish us that I should strive to have my bliss alone? Since I and other beings both in fleeing suffering are equal and alike, what difference is there to distinguish us that I should save myself and not the others? Therefore, just as I defend myself from even slight disparagement, in just the same way with regard to others, I should likewise have a mind protective and compassionate. To free myself from harm and others from their suffering, let me, let me give myself to others, loving them as I now love myself. All right, so we're just going to begin with just a couple minutes of mindfulness of breathing meditation, just to kind of calm down and, and be present. So I'm going to ring the gong. Everybody here knows how to do that meditation, so I'm not going to explain it. Um, and... Uh, I'll ring the gong to start and also to finish. So first we're going to talk about and practice um, calm, a calm mind. So 
many if not all of us are experiencing a certain amount of fear right now and that is totally understandable it's completely reasonable in the face of what may come but you know ultimately we have to consider if fear is a useful emotion or not right so how is does fear help us or help anybody else right it doesn't it doesn't help us it doesn't help anybody else okay um it really uh instead of helping it hurts us personally it's a very uncomfortable feeling as we know right as everybody who couldn't sleep last night knows um so it hurt hurts us personally and it makes us like less able to help others right because if our mind is is full of fear if it is full of um you know any kind of really um powerful emotion like fear hatred anger this kind of thing the mind is very unstable there's a lot of like agitation in the mind at that time right so if our mind is agitated if our mind is um muddied with these things then we're not going to be able to see clearly right and if we can't see clearly if we can't access our inherent wisdom then we're not going to really be able to know what to do to benefit others right we're just going to be swimming in the same soup that they are and instead of um you know creating a sense of peace and calm and um you know love and so forth in any given situation we just add to the chaos even if our intention is good even if we're trying to do something really positive we still end up in if our mind is 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 agitated in that way um we still end up just creating more chaos because we can't see clearly okay so um as far as like fear and in kind of our um for lack of a better word sort of indulgence in the fear you know another important thing to remember is that fear has nothing to do with right now right it has to do with the future fear and anxiety are essentially and when i say fear in this case in every case that i'm talking about today i i don't mean the fear that arises um when you're walking down a dark alley by yourself and you hear somebody behind you i don't mean that kind of fear okay really there should be two different words but anyway um so we have to realize that fear anxiety in this case like wondering for example what's going to happen with the election um that's a fantasy about the future the future doesn't exist yet yeah ultimately the future doesn't exist at all but let's not go there okay so the future doesn't exist yet, right? It doesn't exist. It's not here at this time, right? And the past also doesn't exist. It has already happened. At this point the past is just a memory to us. We think about like our own past, right? So and we should know by now, you know, how unreliable our memories are. Yeah, they really it's very interesting to see studies on this kind of thing. because our memories like they're very unreliable you know it's possible for someone else to kind of instill a memory in us um and we just um remember things that never happened or we don't remember all the details etc cetera, etc cetera. so the only thing that we have is right here right now the only thing that we can control if you want to use that word or deal with is right here and right now okay um personally like when i find myself spinning out with anxiety uh one of the most useful things and quick and really powerful things um is just to bring my mind back to the present moment okay feel my feet on the floor go upwards from there to my head and feel every part of my body and feel that sense of groundedness yeah and then to take some some breaths to bring the mind bring the attention to the breath and just take some breaths and that really brings you 
now. And when we are here and now, it's much easier to let go of the anxiety, to let go of the fear, okay? So, um, right, so, okay. So we may want things to be different, right? We're worried, okay? But we have to realize like we may or may not be able to do anything about the situation, yeah? We've seen in the last four years that, you know, we Americans who, um, well, let's say a certain segment of the population hasn't been able to affect change at all, you know? So that's a situation where it's not like we stop trying. We should, of course, do everything we can um, to benefit others, to, you know, make the world a better place. But if we approach that with a tremendous amount of expectation, you know, um, you know, running towards the outcome and uh, having a lot of investment in the result, rather than again being present, uh, you know, cultivating a clear mind, a calm heart, this kind of thing, then we're really just stirring up our own suffering and not being very helpful to others. So in that, with that, in that regard, um, maybe this is my favorite quotes ever of Shantideva. So I think all you guys know, The Way of the Bodhisattva um, by Shantideva. He says, um, if there's a remedy for when trouble strikes, what reason is there for dejection? And if there is no help for it, what use is there in being glum? Yeah, I used to have that on a post-it by my computer. So if we can do something about it, then why should we worry? Because we can do something about it. And if we can't do something about it, what is worrying going to help? Worrying is not going to do anything to help us. Okay. So the other thing we need to be aware of is kind of looking for, for something outside of ourselves to create peace, okay? So even if you look at um, like political, you know, peace from a political standpoint, like world peace, this really cannot happen unless we create inner peace. Dalai Lama says, peace means to be, peace means being undisturbed free from danger. It relates to our mental attitude and whether we have a calm mind. What is crucial to realize is that ultimately peace of mind is within us. It requires that we develop a warm heart and use our intelligence. People often don't realize that warm heartedness, compassion, and love are actually factors for our survival. And that's something that we can, unquote, <laughs> and that's something that we can um, apply um, to the world, really. You know, we all know that um, global warming uh, or what is it, climate change is, um, you know, extremely threatening um, and all the other problems that I'm sure all of us could list very quickly. Um, so those things arise because there is a lack of warm heartedness, compassion and love, not to mention wisdom by those in power who, who have created these problems, right? So we need those things for our survival. So the Dalai Lama, and this is not a quote, but he, he says, you know, why is this, right? It's because of our, our true nature our true nature or enlightened nature or Buddha nature or basic goodness is one of compassion and, and wisdom. Yeah. So we can see for ourselves if this is true or not. You know, when we hurt somebody purposely or accidentally, how do we feel? Yeah, there's a feeling of unease. There's a sort of uncomfortable feeling, excuse me, and how do we feel when we help someone, when we're generous, when we 
give something to someone, whether it's material or our time or a sympathetic ear. Yeah, that feels particularly uh, good, right? So His Holiness says, you know, that's because um, of our true nature. So that compassion, love, and so forth is part of our true nature. So he often brings up the example of this famous, or I should say infamous, uh, Romanian orphanage. Some of you might have heard of that, where the children there were denied any form of affection. Um, an article I read about this in The Atlantic says, quote, lacking an attachment figure, a parent or caregiver, could wreak a lifetime of havoc on mental and physical health, unquote. So His Holiness says this is because love is, our, is part of our true nature, and without it we become ill and even die. So to develop calm and compassion in our own mind is not to hide from the world, which sometimes people think like if you're meditating, you're sort of, you know, hiding from the world or you're kind of running away or escaping, right? Um, it's, it's rather than that, it's, it's really the opposite. It's really the best way to help others, as I said earlier, right? both because we can see more clearly and because it gives us the strength to stay in the work, right? One time I asked Tuka Rinpoche, um, I really wanted to know about him personally, but I knew that he wouldn't answer if I, used, if I directed the question to him personally. So I, I asked him about bodhisattvas <laughs> in general. So I said, um, like, what, how how do the bodhisattvas excuse me how do the bodhisattvas do it how do they do it how do they continue to come back continue to work with us despite our um you know anger hatred discouragement you know this kind of thing all of our problems all of the suffering and so forth and he said it's because they realize emptiness they have realized emptiness right empty of inherent existence so because of that, he said, they don't get caught like we do, yeah? Because they understand that ultimately all of this is, is illusory. It's like a dream, right? It's like a mirage. It's like there's these eight examples of, of illusion, yeah? So they have all the compassion there to you know, see that someone else is suffering, to have compassion for that, to try to do something about it, but without seeing anything as solid. And he said, because we see everything as solid, we get burned out. Okay. So, so, you know, this is really important to remember. And it's, it's, we can practice that, you know, we can practice having compassion for others, helping others. And, uh, with this view of emptiness as best we can and see how we feel afterwards, right? See if we're drained afterwards or um, kind of nourished in a way afterwards or peaceful afterwards, yeah? So that's a really, um, I think that's that's like a really helpful thing, okay? So, um Okay, so let's do let's just do a few more minutes of meditation and then we'll talk about the next thing. Okay.
Okay. So, um, one last thing I want to say is, as far as this is concerned, before we move on to the section on compassion, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, a crisis like this, you know, a big deal um, situation like what we're experiencing now or, you know, in the middle of conflict with someone or any of these things, any sort of really powerful um, emotion that we're experiencing is so, so helpful for practice. And the reason for that is because it's right in our face. It's not theoretical. It's right there, you know, and it's powerful and it's uncomfortable, right? So because of these things, it's something we want to work with. And, you know, we don't, once we start to practice and study, you know, we don't really, we understand that like, going back to our habitual way of dealing with things is not really skillful, it's not really gonna help. So then we really, with sincere, with a lot of sincerity, we look to the Dharma, we look to the Buddhist teachings, yeah? How can I handle this particular thing? So it's so, it's very helpful right now, in the next, you know, how, at least, you know, in the next few weeks, especially, um, depending on what happens, it's such a good opportunity opportunity for us to turn to the Dharma and to actually practice, okay? So now we're going to move on to um, subject of compassion. So a calm mind is not enough, okay? Of course, it, it's good. Of course, it's really good, okay? But uh, we also need to develop a mind that is imbued with compassion, okay? This is part of our true nature, as we talked about earlier. But it's also something we can bring forth in a more powerful way through study, reflection, and meditation. So all of these things, like our true nature, our Buddha nature, our enlightened goodness, whatever you want to call it, is all, it means like all the qualities of enlightenment we already have. Okay, the practice on this path is a matter of accessing that of removing the veils and the obscurations that prevent us from realizing that, from seeing it, from acting on it. So when we practice things like, you know, mindfulness of breathing meditation or Tonglen, the practice of exchange, which we're gonna do today, um, that is to help us in our aim to realize those things, to practice, um, bringing forth our own um, enlightened qualities. So the opposite of compassion is hatred and anger. All right. So right now, you know, not right, not just right now, but particularly in these last four years, we've seen a, a really great increase in division in, um, I was, I don't usually use this word, but I would say shameless expression of hatred and anger and prejudice and things like that, right? So in response to that, we may feel a kind of righteous anger towards them, yeah? Towards people we see as the other side, towards people that we perceive as amoral and contributing to the problem and all of that. I'm not saying that they are not that way, okay? We're not saying, oh, we should pretend and that everything is daisies and rainbows and every person is good and holy. No, no. But our hatred, frustration, dismay in front of these people, you know, in relation to these people, um, Again, it's not helping us. It's not helping anything. It's not helping us. It's not helping them. It's not fixing the situation. If we approach those things with hatred, anger, etc., all we're doing is creating more hatred and anger in the world. So if, you know, we have to find then another way of, of relating, okay? Um, as the Dalai Lama says, Quote, to achieve peace of mind, it's important to have patience. And it's people who are hostile and antagonistic rather than our friends who teach us patience, unquote. So 
Rather than indulging in hatred for those we hate or dislike, the teachings are that we should appreciate them. You know, we should appreciate them for helping us develop patience, um, which is a quality that's necessary to attain enlightenment. Shantideva says in the way of the Bodhisattva, uh, so like a treasure found at home that I have gained without fatigue, my enemies are helpers in my Bodhisattva work and therefore they should be a joy to me. Since I have grown in patience thanks to them, to them its first fru fruits I should give for of my patience they have been the cause. All right, so now we're going to do some Tonglen practice Tonglen, the practice of exchange, um, where we take on the suffering of others and we offer them our own happiness. Um, we're going to do it today for uh, the so-called enemy, people we don't like. So you can choose anyone you want <laughs> to fit that. Uh -uh. Okay, so um, you guys have all, all have instructions in that. If you, if you need more instructions, there's more videos on YouTube where I give uh, that guided meditation, okay? All right. So first, again, just bring your mind back to the breath. Sit quietly for a moment. Okay, now I'm going to ring the gong. Just listen to the sound as long as you can hear it and let your mind rest. Now imagine in your heart center, which is the middle of your chest, a very bright white light, like a shining star, with light going in all directions. Then consider that you are breathing in gray smoke, hot, dark, and heavy, through all the pores of your body and each and every particle of that smoke dissolves into the white light in your heart center. Until there's not a single particle left, there's only light. Now breathe out that white light through all the pores of your body the light is cool, clean, clear, very bright, going in all directions. Now imagine in front of you someone you dislike. It can be someone that you um, just kind of always have a hard time with and you know, for whatever reason, you just really don't like this person. Or it can be someone that you normally love but are currently having a problem with. Okay, so just picture that person in front of you. And you might feel a little tightening of the heart at this point. That's okay. Just breathe through it. So the first thing we want to do in this case is to remember the uh, changing nature of relationships. Because what often happens in, in when we have a um, you know, difficult relationship with someone 
is that we we make it very solid and we forget how it started we forget everything and we just sort of obsess over that so if we remember the changing nature of relationships then it kind of loosens that up right so if we, if we consider like our childhood best friend you know do we even know where they are right now or our first love or someone we hated in high school or this kind of thing yeah we might not remember them at all. And if we look throughout our life from childhood till now, we can see, you know, strangers become friends, friends become loved ones, loved ones become enemies and on and on. So we consider that to, again, kind of just loosen up the sense of permanence in relationship to this particular difficult relationship we have right now. Then we wanna consider um, our sameness, our similarity with this person. So the most basic one is that we both want to be happy. We both want to avoid suffering. And yet we both experience suffering nonetheless. And then to consider that if this person were inherently hate worthy, let's say, then everyone would hate them. If that was an inherent part to who they were as a person. But that can't be true because there our least favorite person is someone else's most favorite person, right? And even if coming from the other direction, even if that person has been very unkind to us, or let's say, you know, they're just unkind in general, um, even they have some love for something. Even they have Buddha nature. Maybe they only love their dog, you know, or their cat or something, right? But they have that capacity for love just like we do. So if that hatred that we have for them is not inherent to them, that means it doesn't live in them. So where does it come from, right? It comes from ourselves. It comes from our own mind. So once we consider all that, then we want to move on to um, trying to develop compassion for this person. All right. So we have to understand that all negative acts that anybody does, and if we look at, at ourselves, we'll see it's true for us as well. All negative acts are done out of the essential wish to remove suffering. It's just an unskillful action in the aim to remove some kind of suffering. Normally we don't think about that consciously, right? Something happens and we respond, you know, and then uh, our anger explodes or we do something negative. But if we examine it, we can see that that's true. If you take um, all these people who support our current president, it's the same for them. You know, they have a feeling of powerlessness. They have a feeling of um, fear, a lot of fear. They have um, uncertainty. And out of that, they are allowing themselves to be controlled and manipulated by this person and allowing themselves to express this hatred and anger that they might normally kind of be able to um, control a little bit, right? So it's not to say, oh, everything all these people are doing is great, it's good, you know. It's not about that. It's about how are we as people relating to them? Doesn't mean we have to accept, doesn't mean we can't protest, okay? Doesn't mean we shouldn't vote, of course, you know, all these things. It just means how are we doing those things? How are we relating to them with body, speech, and mind? We can set boundaries, we can act either with a heart full of hatred and anger, or we can do the very same things with a heart full of love and compassion, okay? So 
So we think about this person in front of us and the pain that caused them to do whatever they did that hurt us. And then we consider whatever else they might be going through. Might be sick or have be depressed, lonely, have money worries, all kinds of things. Maybe we don't know them all, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So thinking of their suffering, we then develop compassion for them, the wish that they be free of suffering. And if you think about that, their freedom from suffering, their happiness also immediately becomes, makes them kinder. Yeah. Happy people are not mean, right? So thinking of all their suffering, wishing that they be free of suffering, we consider whatever they're going through takes the form of gray smoke, hot, dark, and heavy. It leaves them and it comes to you. And with courage and compassion, you breathe that in through all the pores of your body all the smoke dissolving into the white light in your heart center till there's not a single particle left. There's only light. Then you breathe out that white light through all the pores of your body. And when these rays of light touch that person, you see all their suffering just completely disappear. And they feel very relieved, happy, and at ease. And you feel joyful for being able to do this for them. Now we send that out towards all sentient beings without exception. And the inner ring of that will be um, our president and all of his enablers along with all beings, human and animal who have suffered under this administration in America and around the world. And then beyond that is another ring of all other sentient beings, okay? So in front, as many as we can conceive of, many sentient beings as we can imagine, all the way to the horizon, same to the right, same behind, and same to the left. So again, we consider our similarities in that we all want to be happy, we all want to be free of suffering, and we all suffer nonetheless. We also want to think of our connection to all these beings, even if we might not realize it. The Buddha taught that each and every sentient being without exception has been our kind and loving mother in one of our countless previous lives. And so we want to repay their kindness by becoming enlightened. Rinpoche also encourages us to think about um, how many beings support our day-to-day -day life, you know, that we could not really live without others. Our food is dependent on others, our clothing is dependent on others, our housing, our medical care, so many countless other things are dependent on others. So we want to think of them with, you know, gratitude and wish them happiness. So now that we've, um, visualized all sentient beings all around us. Then we consider whatever sufferings they might be going through. All of that takes the form of gray smoke, hot, dark, and heavy. It leaves them and it comes to you with a great deal of openness, compassion, and courage. Breathe that in through all the pores of your body and every particle of smoke dissolves into the white light in your heart center till there's not a single particle left. There's only light. 
Then you breathe out white light, cool, clean, clear, very, very bright, each and every pore of your body emanating a ray of white light in every direction. This white light contains our own happiness, our own good fortune. We should consider we're giving it away along with anything at all that they need and adding to that the wish that they attain full and complete enlightenment in this very life. So we breathe out this light in all directions as far as the eye can see. And when the light touches all these beings, each individually, their suffering just lifts off of them and disappears like fog in the morning sun. They feel so relieved, so happy and at ease, finally. And you feel really joyful for being able to do this for them. Now we let go of the visualization altogether. Gently bring the mind back to the breath. Being in the present moment, here and now. Okay, <clears throat> so I wanted to also do that tongue lend for yourself, to show you how to do that for yourself. I know everybody here has already experienced that meditation, and I'm sorry, but we're really running out of time, so I can't do that today. But uh, you can again find on YouTube um, where I do guide that meditation for oneself. And I would really recommend doing that at this time because it's very stressful, it's, um, it's painful, and if we uh, get carried away in our fear and anxiety and things like that, this can really help to kind of replenish our energy. So now we move on to kind of what, what now? What do we do now? Okay. Um, there will always be injustice in this world. There has always been injustice in this world. We're in samsara, cyclic existence, and that's how things are, right? We should do all that we can to transform that, no doubt. But we should also know there's only so much we can do and don't despair. We should really try to not despair about it. Yeah? We do what we can do, we do our best, and beyond that, we refer to, you know, Shanti Deva's. Um, verse, you know, if there's something we can do about it, why worry? If there's nothing we can do about it, why worry, right? So again, the Dalai Lama says, if we have a positive mental attitude, then even when surrounded by hostility, we'll not lack inner peace. But if our attitude is negative, influenced by fear, suspicion, or helplessness, even when surrounded by our best friends in comfortable surroundings, we won't be happy, unquote. So let's try to, you know, cultivate calm, compassion, patience, and a peaceful heart. All of these things will not only help us personally in the coming days and years, but will also allow us to be more skillful in helping others. So in closing, uh, I don't know if you know Lama Yeshe, but he's this wonderful uh, Galupa Lama was. Um, he says, quote, think like this, for the rest of my life, it is my responsibility to grow in mindfulness and happiness. Each day I will expand the loving kindness I already have. When I wake up each morning, I will open my wisdom eye and see more and more deeply into the inner universal reality. I will try to be as mindful as possible. I will take responsibility for my life and dedicate it to others by growing strong in loving kindness and wisdom. 
I will serve others as much as possible. We should make the determination that this is going to be our way of life, unquote. So now please read the closing verses with me. May every being ailing with disease be freed at once from every malady. May every sickness that afflict, afflicts the living be holy and forever absent from the world. May those who go in dread have no more fear. May captives be unchained and now set free. And may the weak receive their strength. May living beings help each other in kindness. May children and the ages, aged and all those without protection wandering in the fearful pathless wastes who fall asleep unconscious of their peril have pure celestial beings as their guardians. And now, as long as space endures, as long as there are beings to be found, may I continue likewise to remain to drive away the sorrows of the world. Now we'll say the dedication prayer, once in English and once in Tibetan. By this merit, may all attain omniscience, may defeat the enemy wrongdoing. From the stormy waves of birth, old age, sickness and death, from the ocean of cyclic existence, may I free all beings. So nam di tam che sik pa ni tob ne ye pe dra nam pam che shing ke ga na chi ba lon tru pa yi si pe tso le dro wa dro wa shu.